Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome dear learners to the session of managerial economics. I am Dr. Supriya Jain working as an assistant professor in the Institute of Business Management at GLA University, Mathura. Let us start our session for today. Let us see the topics which we have covered in our previous session. We have talked about the nature and scope of managerial economics. Nature means the characteristics and feature. We have seen that the managerial economics is micro in nature. It uses only those theories from economics which are related to the firm. It deals with the things in a very pragmatic and you know uh, applied approach it uses. It also take help of conceptual and theoretical aspects to take into the problem of managerial economics. And we have also seen that it gives an adequate importance to macroeconomics because ultimately the firm has to operate within the society. So, these are the basic nature were discussed in our last session. And we have also talked about the scope of managerial economics like what all comes under the preview of managerial economics and there we have classified it into two major categories internal issues and the operational issues right and the other are your external and environmental issues. So, what is within the organization like how we analyze the demand, what type of cost and production analysis is being needed, how to manage the profit, capital management, all these things will be taken up under this managerial economics and we also talk about the issues related to macroeconomics, foreign nation as well as government policies. Thereafter, we have seen about the objectives of the firm like for the functioning of the firm for the proper strategy formulation it is very important to define certain objective because these objectives acts as a guiding principle for us right. So, different theories were given under this we have talked about like profit maximization theory like this can be one of the objective for which firms are working for the maximization of profit and profit has been considered as a reward for the risk and uncertainties which are being bared in the businesses. Then there was the another theory given by Bommel's regarding the sales revenue maximization rather than focusing on profit maximization the theory focuses on increasing the sales maximization of sales right. Thereafter we have talked about the Maris hypothesis of maximization of growth rate. In this theory we have focused on growth rate because this if the organization is taking uh, growth in the market definitely their sales will be increasing and their profit also will be increasing. So, this theory basically combines the previous two aspects of uh, businesses. Then we have talked about the Williamson model of managerial utility function as we have seen in the modern organization management separates from the ownership and the management wants to utilize their you know increase their utility in terms of getting better uh, working advantage and the environment uh, perks and compensation other than the salaries also right. So, they try to increase their utility and at the same time they try to satisfy the shareholders by maintaining the minimum profits also. And lastly we have talked about the behavioral theories where we have uh, seen the concept given by Simon, Syred and March, they, they focus on satisfying behavior right and Syred and March focused on multi goals and multi dimensional because it is not only the owner and the management who have been associated with the business, but we need to take care of all these stakeholders who have been associated whether they are customers, whether they are employees, their financiers, suppliers, government or the social interest groups right. So, everybody has some or the other expectations so we need to take into account each of them to satisfy them right and then thereafter we have seen the difference among economic theory and marginal theory how do we differentiate between two and lastly in this session we have talked about the roles and responsibilities of managerial economist. What are the different roles which are being played by the managerial economist because he constitute to be a most important 
part of the organization so right so basically his role is into each and everything he's helping the management and decision making he's helping the management in forward planning he is also playing the administrative role, he try to uh, give the economic intelligence where they are providing the information to the management so that better decisions can be taken up, right. He also participates in various uh, activities, in public activities as well as government activities so that they can appear there as uh, the representative of the organization or also maintain relationship with the people, right. Uh, he is responsible to forecast the sale, he is also responsible to market research, right. So, all these responsibilities were given to him so that he can also help in increasing the profit margin and minimizing the risk of the businesses. So, this is what we, are, uh, we have been discussed in our previous session. Now, let us talk about what all we are going to cover in today's session. Here in this, uh, you will get to know about all these things. Uh, all these things. So let us look at the learning objective of today's session. First of all, by the end of this session, you will be able to get the understanding of the core economic principle. When I am calling about this economic principle, you need to take care of these principle very carefully because these are the most important and the fundamentals to understand how a manager would be able to make right decision. So, the understanding of these core economic principles will uh, you know uh, will be able to help you to take the better decision and to apply the wide range of real world issue. So, first of all we will talk about the opportunity cost and how this opportunity cost is important for us and helping us in a better decision making. Thereafter you will be able to understand the concept of incremental cost as well as incremental revenue and their significance in managerial decision making. At the end you will be able to understand the relevance of time principle, right? time perspective principle and what is the importance of time period in decision making, what impact it is going to create in your business in short run as well as in the long run. Thereafter we will talk about the discounting principle which will help you to know about the time value of money as we know that the value of money is decreasing day by day. So, how we are going to calculate it and what is the uh, you know principle talking about and how this principle help us in making our financial decisions that we will be able to cover, uh, cover here and lastly we will talk about equimarginal principle which is again very important since we are talking about scarcity and economics is all about allocating the resources so that we would be able to satisfy our maximum needs and wants. So, here you will be able to understand equimarginal principle as well as its relevance in the allocation of resources. So, let us move to the topic where we are going to start with the economic principles and like I said the economic provides us the variety of concepts and analytical tool which be of considerable assistance means they are going to provide you lot of help right how a manager would be able to make right decisions right. So, these principles are basically helping a manager to make the decision in a proper manner to analyze each and every situation and to make lot of uh, you know understanding of the uh, aspects which are available to them. So, ultimately we are going to cover about these five principles. The first one is the opportunity cost principle, then we have incremental principle, we will talk about principle of time perspective, discounting principle and equimarginal principle. So, first we are going to start with the opportunity cost principle. Now, let me tell you this is the most important principle which we are going to start with which is known as opportunity cost principle. We are talking about two terms, one is opportunity and the second is the cost. So, what is meant by this opportunity cost, right? Opportunity cost is basically the cost of sacrificing the next best alternative, right? If you have uh, different alternatives of something, so what will you do? You will definitely going to choose the best amongst the available alternative. So, the second best alternative which you have sacrificed because you have chosen the first best alternative. So, the cost of sacrificing the second best alternative would be considered to be known as opportunity cost. So, basically we can say that that is what the opportunity which was available to us, but now as because we have sacrificed it, 
it becomes the cost and that is how we call it opportunity cost. The opportunity which was available to us, we could have taken up that opportunity, but now because we have sacrificed it, because we have chosen the best one, right. So, the second best opportunity which was available to you, you have sacrificed it, this becomes the cost. So, opportunity cost of any alternative is defined as the cost of not selecting the next best alternative, right. And here if you look at this diagram, uh, this picture you can see that considerable factors of opportunity cost, everything has an opportunity cost in terms of money, time as well as efforts, right. So, whatever we are doing right now and what we could have done, okay, we need to make a comparison, right. So, if we are doing what we are doing right now, we are not able to do the another thing at the same time. So, we have the opportunity in terms of that time period also. So, everything has an opportunity. This concept is not applicable where we do not have the alternative, but yes, if we have the alternative of the options, we could have done this or that, right. And if we uh, definitely we cannot do two things together. So, we have to do one thing. So, the cost of not doing the other thing would be considered to be an opportunity cost. Now, the opportunity cost of availing an opportunity is the expected income foregone. Now, when we are talking about opportunity cost and particularly in economics, then definitely there comes the economic aspects to it, right. So, opportunity cost of availing an opportunity is the expected income foregone, okay. You could have uh, earned the income from that alternative, but because you have sacrificed that option, so that was the expected income which has been foregone now becomes uh, your opportunity from the second best alternative which was available to you. Let me give you one example to make this very clear, right. So, here we have an example, we have taken an example of a firm and this firm is having 100 millions at its disposal. We are taking the situation, okay, we are just assuming that suppose there is a firm and the firm is having 100 millions at its disposal, right. And now this firm is having three alternatives. The firm can uh, use this particular amount in these three different options available to him. The first one is they can use this money to expand the size of their business. So, this was one alternative which is available to them and you can see the return which they are expecting from this alternative. They have expected that if they will be using this money to expand the size of their existing business, they would be getting a return of 20 millions. The second alternative is they can also use this money in setting up a new production unit, right. Rather than existing, uh, increasing the size of their expected uh, existing business, they can also use this money in uh, set up of a new production unit and from this alternative, they have expected the return of 18 millions, right. And the another alternative which they are having is they can buy the share of any company, any other firm with this amount and the expected return from that alternative is 16 million. So, these are the three alternatives which are available to the firm and these are the expected returns, right. This is the return which they have expected from these alternative. Now, if you look at these alternative and keep everything intact like we have already written here, all the other thing being, uh, being same, citrus paribus. I hope you remember guys in the very first lecture we have talked about economic assumptions where we have talked about citrus paribus which means keeping other thing constant, right. As because we are assuming this there is a firm who is having this much of money and they can use this money for different alternatives and whatever we have expected uh, because we are expecting it for the future, right and future is always risky and uncertain. So, anything could happen. So, what best we can do right now is we can assume that if everything remains the same, okay, if there is, uh, if nothing changes, right, and whatever we have taken into our analysis goes like that. So, we have uh, taken this assumption of citrus paribus and we are deciding rationally, right, where we are also analyzing the cost and benefit of this uh, decision, then definitely we will be choosing the very first alternative because the very first alternative is giving us the maximum return, uh, you know, as compared to the other alternative available to us, right. So, what we are saying is that implies the manager has to sacrifice, okay, uh, the annual return of 18 million expected from the alternative 2. Now, you can see that as because we have chosen the very first alternative which is going to give us the expected return of 20 million. So, for that we have to sacrifice the second alternative. Right. The second alternative was setting up a new production unit 
from where we could have expected the return of 18 million. Now, this 18 million will becomes our opportunity cost, right? This is going to be our opportunity cost because we have chosen the best alternative. We are not considered with the third one, right? The rest other alternatives, maybe we could have used this money in the other alternatives also, but we are not comparing those options right now. We are just making a comparison between the first, the best as well as the second best, right? So, first or uh, the best alternative we have already chosen. Now, the second best alternative will become the opportunity cost for us because this was the expected income which we could have earned from this alternative, but now we have sacrificed this, uh, sacrificed this and we have uh, you know foregone this income. So, this becomes the opportunity cost. Now, let us move further. What we can say in economic terms, this 18 million is the annual opportunity cost. What is this 18 million? This is basically an annual opportunity cost of an annual income for earning 20 million. So, what you will be earning? You will be earning 20 million because of the best alternative which you have chosen, but this 18 million will be your annual opportunity cost. Now, the question comes why are we comparing this? Why are we talking about this alternative when we have already sacrificed it? Right, with all the comparisons which we have already made and we have chosen the best alternative, then what is the use of calculating the uh, you know second best alternative or the income which we could have expected from that second best alternative. For that you can understand that in economics we are not only concerned with the accounting profit, in economics we are concerned with the economic profit. Right. So, in accounts usually we talk about accounting profit and accounting profit is the profit which we are earning from what we are doing, but economic profit is the profit which we calculate when we uh, you know deduct opportunity cost from the actual earning, right. If your actual earning is more than the opportunity cost then you are in economic gain, but if your actual earning is lesser than the economic profit then you are in economic loss. So, you can see that the difference between actual earning and opportunity cost is economic gain or economic profit. In this case, if everything remains same and if the firm will earn 20 million expected income from the first alternative, then they would be receiving 20 million and their opportunity cost was 18 million. So, 2 million is their economic gain, but if anyhow they would not be able to earn this 20 million as their actual return and they would be earning lesser than this, then they might be in economic loss. So, it is very important for us to understand what we are doing and what we could have done, right. It is not that what we are doing is the best uh, alternative we have chosen. It might be possible in certain cases sometimes we are not able to understand this concept clearly and we calculate that we are earning accounting profit and we are not making any loss, right. So, this is the principle which is going to help you to understand you need not only have to focus on the actual profit or the counting profit, you have to take care of economic profit also, right. Sometimes what we do, we use uh, you know our own resources, suppose if I am doing my business on my own land, so I am not going to pay rent to myself, right. But what happened, I am also not getting rent from somewhere else because I am using it for my business purpose, right. So, what I need to understand is whatever we are doing on our own business property or on our own land, we need to take into account that profit what we are generating is good enough to get economic gain or not, right. So, all these things are needed to be taken care of while we are understanding this concept of opportunity cost. So, there is a very important saying given for this opportunity cost, not all costs paid out of the pocket, some costs are funds that never reach your pocket. So, this is very important for you to understand, all costs are not coming from your pocket, the, these are the, not the costs which you are paying out of your pocket, these are basically the income which never reach your pocket, right. Uh, this is how we understand this concept of opportunity cost, right. And these are the formulas which are written here, you with, through which you can calculate the opportunity cost. The very first uh, uh, says that total revenue minus economic profit, whatever you have earned, if you are minusing, uh, if you are you know deducting the amount of economic profit, you will be able to calculate the opportunity cost and vice versa we have done that. And opportunity cost is basically what one sacrifice upon what one gains, right. What you have sacrificed. So, basically you have to take care of 
uh, this opportunity cost formulas where we are saying that opportunity cost is equals to total revenue minus economic profit. This is one way you can calculate it and the other way is opportunity cost is equals to what one sacrifice upon what one gains. Right. So, I hope all of you have understood this concept of opportunity cost. Opportunity cost is the cost of sacrificing the next best alternative and this concept is very important for us to understand because in economics we are not concerned only with the accounting profit, but we are concerned with the economic profit and we can calculate the economic profit with the help of opportunity cost. What we are earning in actual and what we could have earned. This is the expected income which has been foregone, right, because we have sacrificed that alternative. So, if we are earning more than the opportunity cost, then we are in economic gain, otherwise we are in economic loss. So, if we are in economic loss, that means our decision was not right, the calculation which we have made previously was not right or the alternative which we have chosen as the best alternative was not the best selection. So, in future we need to take into account further calculations and analysis so that we could have chosen the best alternative to it. So, this is one principle which helps the manager in analyzing the alternative and making the right choice. Let us move to the uh, second principle which is called as incremental principle. Now look at this principle, this is again very interesting for you to understand. This incremental cost involves estimating the impact of decision alternatives on cost and the revenue, right emphasizing the change in the total cost and the total revenue resulting from the change in the price, product, procedures, investments or whatever may be at stake in decision. So, in short you can say that increased cost, incremental cost is the increased cost because of change in any decision, right. If you have changed the price of the product, if you have changed the size of your production, if you have changed the process of your production or you have implemented new marketing strategies in your business. So, whatever may be the decision you are making and because of that, if there is an increase in the cost that would be constitute as an incremental cost. So, basically this principle uh, focuses on two basic component, one is your incremental cost and the one is your incremental revenue. Increased cost is the incremental cost whereas, increased revenue is the incremental revenue. If because of any change we are making into our business decision, if we are able to increase our revenue then it would be con called as incremental revenue and if there is increase in cost then it will be constitute as an incremental cost. So, basically what we can see here is whatever the change we are bringing to our business, right, it will impact either the cost or the revenue. So, here we have some points to understand how we are going to make our decision and what decision will be profitable for our business. So, here we have some conditions given over here which we need to understand. The very first point says if any decision, right, we have two things here, one is revenue and the other one is cost. So, the first point says that it increases revenue more than the cost, right. If the in, uh, revenue is increasing and cost is uh, also increasing, but the increase in revenue say is 15 percent and increases cost is 5 percent. So, will that decision will be profitable for you? For sure, because here your ultimate you will be in profit, ultimately you will be in profit because there will be an increase, more increase in revenue than the cost, right. So, increase in revenue more than the cost, both of them are increasing, but revenue is increasing more then definitely the decision will be profitable one. Second point says that it decreases some cost to the greater extent it increases other. We know that in business there are different type of cost. We will further talk about cost concepts and then classification in our further lectures. But for you now to understand this is we have different type of cost involved in the business like we have fixed cost, we have variable cost, we have marginal cost, we have uh, you know incremental cost. So, there are different type of cost associated in the business. So, in the second point what we are saying this decision is only impacting the cost, some of the cost are decreasing and some of the cost are increasing, but the decrease in some cost is uh, you know the percentage of decrease in the cost is more than the percentage of increase in the other, right. So, ultimately the decision is a profitable decision because your cost is decreasing finally, right your percentage of cost is decreasing more. The third point says that it increases some revenue more than it decreases other. 
So, now this decision is only impacting the revenue ok, say revenue from product A and revenue from product B ok. If the revenue of product A is increasing and the revenue from the product B is decreasing, but the increase in the revenue of product A is comparatively more than the re uh, decrease in the revenue from the product B, then definitely the decision is a profitable one because ultimately it is going to increase the revenue of the firm. Right. And in the last point we are saying it reduces cost more than the revenue, if both are decreasing revenue is also decreasing and cost is also decreasing that what should decrease more definitely the cost should decrease more. If the decrease in the cost is more than the in decrease in the revenue then again the decision will be a profitable one. So, basically what we are trying to make you understand here is whenever we are making any change into our business we need to understand how this decision is going to impact the cost as well as the revenue. The increased cost will be called as incremental cost and the increased revenue will be considered as an incremental revenue. And in every case if we are able to increase our cost uh, you know decrease our cost sorry, so definitely it will be a better situation for us or it will be a profitable situation for us and in every case if we are able to increase our revenue again the decision will be a profitable one. Right. So, these are the four conditions which you need to understand well whenever you bring any change to your business. If both are increasing then revenue should increase more, if both are decreasing then cost should decrease more, right. If only it is impacting the revenue, some of the revenues are increasing and some of the revenues are decreasing from the other product then increase in the revenue should be more. And if it is only impacting the cost in that case if some costs are decreasing and some costs are increasing that the decrease in the cost percentage should be more. So, then our decisions will be profitable one. So, let us look at the example to further understand this incremental cost principle how we apply this principle into the business practices. So, again we can see that suppose there is a new order right a business firm has received a new order and this order will bring an additional revenue to the firm for rupees 5000. A customer came to the business and uh, they gave a order to the business because this is a change they want to uh, you know increase this uh, they want to fulfill this order and the customer is paying rupees 5000. So, before you execute this order you will analyze what cost you are going to incur for the accomplishment of this order. So, you have calculated that for fulfilling this order uh, there will be an expense for labor for which you are going to pay 1500 and the cost of material will be 2000 right uh, the over material which you are going to use for the production of this uh, order and then there will be an overhead expenses, overhead expenses are the expenses for electricity for wear and tear of your machinery right and then we have also calculated the selling and administrative expenses which counts to uh, 700 rupees ok. So, total is your 6000 right. So, you can see for the execution of this order of rupees 5000 your full cost will be 6000. So, what will you do? Will you receive this order or will you uh, take this order? No, definitely no. You will say no to this order as you can see that the customer is giving you 5000 and for the accomplishment of this, uh, this order you are incurring 6000 rupees. So, definitely this pro order uh, appears to be unprofitable to you and you will not execute this order right. So, this is what we have calculated right now. Now, let us continue this example further what we are saying right now suppose, suppose there is an idle capacity. Now, let me tell you about what idle capacity is. We all know that every production house has their capacity of production right. So, Every time we are not working on full capacity, sometimes we have uh, you know lesser orders, sometimes we are working uh, beyond their capacities also. But if we are having some idle capacity, see uh, suppose my capacity of producing per day is 80,000 units right and right now I am only having the orders of 50,000. So, 30,000 units which I could have produced, but because I am not having the order, so I am not producing it right now. So, I am having a idle capacity right now right, right now. I have an idle capacity. So, if the same order came to our notice or to the management notice when the uh, when they are having a idle capacity. So, we are considering the same example, but we have changed the situation. Previously, 
we have calculated this uh, order on the basis of full cost on the basis of total cost. Now, we are going to calculate the same order on the basis of incremental cost. So, suppose there is an idle capacity which can be utilized to execute this order and if the order adds only 500 of overhead right 500 by earlier you can see the overhead expenses were 1800 and now we have reduced this overhead expenses to 500 only because the you know extra expenses which we are going to incur right those expenses only we have calculated which are going to be incurred for the execution specifically for this order right we have not calculated those costs which we were already incurring like you can see material cost will remain same earlier also it was 2000 and now also it will be 2000 because that material is going to be used for the execution of this order but now you can see the labor cost has reduced earlier the labor cost was 1500 and now the labor cost is only 1000 which was reduced to reduced by 500 rupees and why we have reduced this 500 rupees because some of the labor in our organization are on payroll right they would be getting their payment if they are executing this order or not executing this order we are only calculating the amount which we are going to pay for the execution of this order we have not calculated any of that expenses which we were already making even if we were making this order or we were not executing this order right so incremental cost is that cost which is going to increase right so we, we can see that the material cost will remain same but our labor cost reduced by 500 and here our overhead expenses also reduced earlier it was 800 and now it was 1500 so they were reduced by around 1300 okay the uh, expenses which we were already incurring we have only taken the extra expense on on on, uh, on the head of overhead expenses which are going to be here for the execution of this order and you can see uh, there will be no selling and administrative expenses uh, which we are uh, you know making specifically for the execution of this order so we have not calculated it so now you can see that the total incremental cost is rupees 3500 for the execution of this order because we are having some idle capacity and we could uh, take up this order during that period of time so now we can calculate this order on the now we have calculated this order on the basis of incremental cost and we can execute it very easily because this is going to give us the additional revenue of 1500 because customer is paying 5000 for this order and the incremental cost which we are incurring for the execution of, of this order is 3500 so it is giving us a uh, incremental revenue of 1500 which is uh, good enough for the business to earn and they can execute with this order so see what we have seen with this incremental principle pr incremental principle help us to understand the increased cost right we have not calculated those costs which we were already incurring right we have already we have only taken those extra costs which are going to uh, be added for the execution of this particular order right so this is how we can relate it to our business practices uh, if you are not aware of this principle we will always be calculating it on the basis of full cost and we will always say no to th these kind of orders but we need to understand our situation in which situation we are working definitely if you are working on full capacity so we have to give a considerable things to the execution of this order altogetherly so that time we will be calculating it on the basis of full cost but when we are having some idle capacity and we can you know calculate the orders with overhead expenses only or, or the extra expenses which we are going to incur those expenses would be calculated under this would be considered as a part of incremental cost so i hope this principle is clear to every one of you so for the incremental cost we can say that this principle says we can uh, you know presume the action up to the point where the incremental benefits equals to the incremental cost definitely we will be taking up the decision where our benefits would be more than the cost but yes we can take our actions up to the point where at least they are equal right benefits are equal to the cost then also we would be able to make the decision but if the benefits are lesser than the cost then in that case we should not be taking up that decision so again this incremental cost principle help us to understand our situation and on the basis of our situation we need to understand how we are going to calculate it whether we should be calculated it on the basis of full cost or we should be calculating it on the basis of incremental cost that we need to understand now let us move to the third principle 
which is named as principle of time perspective. This is again having a very important uh, you know thing which a manager need to understand that while making any decision they need to take into account the impact of that decision on the business in short run as well as in the long run. So, with this decision you will be able with this principle you will be able to understand the balance between the short run and the long run time period. Managerial economists also concerned with the short run and the long run effect of decision on the revenues as well as the cost. So, a very important problem in decision making is to maintain that right balance whatever the decisions we are taking right now how it is going to impact our business right maybe we are seeing that right now it is profitable for our business but maybe in the long run it is not going to provide us that benefit and sometimes we are taking care of the long term benefits and for that we are making our short term losses again that is not a right thing ok. So, a manager has to make a right balance between the short run and the long run because ultimately the goal of business is to survive for the longer period right. So, this time perspective principle basically help you to take into account to these aspects. So, let us also understand this uh, principle with the help of an example. Suppose there is a firm and this firm is having a temporary idle capacity. I hope now you will be able to understand this meaning of temporary idle capacity that means the firm is having a, a production capacity and right now they are not working up to their uh, you know production capacity which is having with them. So, they are having some idle capacity and in the order of 5000 unit comes to the management attention ok. And the customer is willing to pay 4 rupees per unit for this order. So, you can see uh, that uh, 5000 units they want to uh, give as the order and the customer is ready to pay 4 rupees per unit that means this order is for. Uh, you know 5000 units are there and this order appears for 20,000 ok. But the short run incremental cost ignoring the fixed cost as because we are having this idle capacity. So, we have calculated this order on the basis of incremental cost right not on the basis of total cost. So, we have seen that the incremental cost will be only rupees 3 right per unit cost will be 3 and the customer is ready to pay 4 rupees per unit. So, ultimately we will getting uh, we will get a profit of rupees 1 per unit that means 5000 rupees we would be able to save for this lot if we execute this order. So, if we only apply the last principle which we have studied that was the incremental principle and where we have seen that if a firm is able to get a profit right if they are having some idle capacity and based on the incremental cost if they are able to save some money they could have taken that order and they should have executed it right. But now if we are taking into account this principles of time perspective which is help uh, which is uh, you know telling us to make a right balance between the short run and the long run. In the short run we are definitely getting a benefit of 5000 for the execution of this order. Now, let us also look at the long run replication of this order if we execute it. So, from the above example the following long run replications of order is to be taken into account. The very first point says that if the management commit itself with too much of business at the lower price or with the small contribution it will not have sufficient capacity to take up business with the higher contribution. What does this mean basically if a management keeps it as a habit of executing these small orders on regular basis. So, what they are doing they are having a ca idle capacity they get some attention to some orders they are executing it on the regular basis because they are getting short term profit from them. But what happen in the long run in meanwhile if they are going to get some big order they would not be able to execute it because they have occupied themselves with these small orders and they would not be able to get a bigger chance for it right. Definitely they are getting them some of the other uh, things in return, but ultimately they are not going to give them that kind of return which they should have got ok because they are running have they are having the idle capacity right now. So, they are executing it and calculating it on the basis of incremental cut, but that is not uh, that cannot be done as a regular practice because this might gives them a loss in a longer run when they would be getting some bigger lot of orders right. Secondly, if a customer came to know about this low price they may demand a similar lower prices and such customers may complain of being treated unfairly and feel discriminated against. Now, this is again a very 
important thing which a manager need to take into account because you are calculating this order on the basis of incremental cost right now you are having an ideal capacity and you are executing it but next time if the same customer or the other customer comes to you with the same price you might not be able to offer the same price because maybe the, your situation is different at point of time you are not working on the idle capacity and you would not be able to execute the order on that specific price so what message are you going to convey in the society the other firms will feel discriminated right they they feel like as if they are being treated unfairly and you are offering different prices to different customers but nobody will understand your situation that at that point of time you were working on the idle capacity and right now you are working on the full capacity so basically what i'm trying to tell you here is with this principle whatever the decisions we are making into business we need to take into account the replication of those decisions in our businesses in short run as well as in the long run right i'm not saying that we should not be executing such orders definitely we should be executing this order but once in a while we should not be a manager should not make it as a regular practice that we have understood the concept of incremental cost and we are only calculating the increased cost which we are having and if we are getting certain returns on it we should be taking it up no it should not be the right thing right it should uh, it should uh, may it, it may going to impact the image of the company in the long run where we have seen that might be company is not able to get a bigger profit because they have kept themselves occupied with all these kind of small orders they have they are making and secondly this may create a bad image of your company where customer feel discriminated they might uh, feel uh, like they have been treated unfairly and uh, you know then again there will be a loss of business so i hope uh, the relevance of this time perspective principle is clear to every one of you where we have to understand the impact of any decision we are making in short run as well as in the long run right now let us move to the okay before we move to the next principle in the above example it is therefore important to give due consideration to the time perspective a decision should be taken into account both the short run as well as the long run impact or effect on revenue as well as the cost and maintain a right balance between the long run and the short run perspective right so this is what you need to understand whenever you are making any decision a manager has to take into account the impact of any decision in short run as well as in the long run on both on cost as well as the revenue so this uh, principle is just an extension to your principle of incremental cost right where we have understood and we have seen how we can calculate the cost on the basis of incremental cost the extra cost which we are incurring and time perspective principle had made you understand about the relevance of time period short run as well long run period now moving to the next principle we are calling it as an discounting principle this is again a very important principle is because this this will help you to understand the time value of money and as we all know the value of money is decreasing day by day and in business we have to make lot of decision uh, based on economics and in economics we are always talking in terms of economy and we are always talking uh, talking in economic terms right so money has a uh, you know major consideration here so whenever we are talking about a time frame or a time period then we need to understand this discounting principle very carefully so one fundamental idea in economics is that rupee tomorrow is worth less than a rupee today as because the value of money is decreasing so again there is a uh, thing which is been there suppose a person is offering you 100 rupees right so person is offering you and a choice you have to make whether you want to take a gift this year or you want to uh, you know accept this amount in the next year right if a person is offering you this 100 rupee as a gift today uh, and, and you can also receive this in the next year so what will you do definitely you will like to receive this gift today of 100 rupees rather than receiving it in the next year why because one reason is the future is uncertain whatever you are getting today might not be sure you will be getting it in future okay so the first thing because the future is uncertain there can be uncertainty of getting 100 rupees if the present opportunity is not availed of so it's better to avail the present opportunity if you are having that options with you secondly even if you are sure to receive this gift in the future 
today 100 rupees can be invested so as to earn interest say as 8 percent so after one year your 100 rupees will be 108 right so if you'll receive this amount today and you'll do nothing with this amount you'll keep it into the bank account which is giving you 8 percent interest suppose which is not true in today's time but uh, let us assume that if you will be getting an interest of 8 percent on this 100 rupees then next year this amount will be 108 right otherwise if you will be receiving this amount from that person he will pay you 100 rupees only but up to next year the value will be 108 in, uh, adding the interest of 8 percent to it. So discounting principle is helping us to know the value of money. So why do we, uh, you know, business need to bother about discounting? Now this is again a very important question you need to understand. Why are we talking about this discounting principle? See, we need to understand the inflow of cash and the outflow of cash which is taking place in the business, they take place at the different intervals of time, right? We invest our money today and we are getting the return in future. So this is again very important what we are investing today and what return we are getting in future, we have to take into account the discounting principle. So it is the business inflow and outflow of money and the resources that takes place at different point of time. Therefore, in order to take the right decision, it is necessary to discount future inflow to the present value level. If you are not understanding the discounting principle, suppose I have invested 1 lakh rupees in a business today and I am getting this 1 lakh rupees uh, as an uh, you know return after a year. So will the value of the amount will be same? No, definitely no because I have invested it uh, last year and I have received the amount next year. The value has been decreased. So for that reason the inflow and outflow of cash which are taking place in the business are taking place at different int intervals of time. So we need to take into account this discounting principle. So let us start with the equimarginal principle. This principle is very important for all of us to understand because this will help you to allocate the resources. Since in economics we deal with the scarcity of resources, so it becomes our prime responsibility to allocate our resources in the manner so that we can avoid their over utilization as well as under utilization because both of these situations will be a problematic situations, right. So equimarginal principle will help you to understand how we are going to allocate our resources in the manner where at the end the marginal productivity which we are going to get will remain equal. So it deals with the allocation of resources among alternative activities like I said. And according to this principle, an input should be employed in different activities in such a proportion that the value added by the last unit should remain same in all the activities. So equimarginal utility principle will help you to understand how are we going to allocate the resources. Actually you can understand this principle from both the perspectives, from the perspective of the producer because they need to allocate the resources and from the perspective of the consumer because we need to further allocate our income in the consumption of different commodities so that we would be able to derive equi-marginal utility out of it. So when we will talk about from the producer side, we will talk about marginal productivity and when we will talk about from the consumer side, we will think of marginal utility we are deriving out of it. So let us move uh, to the example where you will be able to understand how we are going to apply this equi-marginal principle in the allocation of resources. Suppose there is a firm who is having 100 units of labor at its disposal. Now if you uh, see that this firm is engaged into the four activities which are A, B, C and D. Do not presume that equal marginal principle says that we are going to allocate these different activities all the resources equally like 25, 25, 25 and 25. That will not be a right allocation because you never know which activity requires how much resources. Maybe the activity A requires 30 resources and we have only allocated 25 uh, labor to this resources. So in that case what we are doing we are over utilizing our resources because there were uh, more requirement and we have allocated less people to it. Same is the case if in the activity B we are requiring 10 people and we have allocated 25 resources to it. That means we are under utilizing our resources. So both these situations were not going to serve our purpose. So what we are going to understand here is we need to understand the requirement of those activities and accordingly we are going to allocate our resources. So it can enhance any one of these activities by adding more labor but sacrificing in the written cost of the other activities. 
So, if the value of the marginal productivity is higher in one activity than the another, then it should be assumed that an optimum allocation has not been attained. So, that optimum allocation has to be attained because if you are providing more resources to one activity in that case you are definitely providing the lesser resource to the another activity because ultimately we are talking about the scarcity of resources. We have those resources in the scarcity. This problem would have not come if we do not have the scarcity. But this you have to assume that we have limited resources and how we are going to allocate these limited resources in a proper manner to different activities so that we would be able to get equi marginal uh, you know productivity at the end. So, this is how we can derive this equi marginal productivity at the end. We can say that value of marginal productivity from the uh, you know activity A should be equals to the value of marginal productivity of activity B, C as well as D. So, this is how we need to allocate. Let us look at the another example to make it more clear how we are going to understand the application of this equi marginal principle. Let us uh, assume the another example there is a firm who is uh, who wants to expend this 10 millions right and they can uh, expend this uh, in the scheduling of a project A, B and C. Right. So, here we have uh, seen this chart where we can see the first unit of the expenditure in product A gives us the marginal productivity of 50, in product B it is giving us 40 whereas in project C the marginal productivity which we are going to get is 35. As the marginal productivity keeps on decreasing as in when we are going to add the further unit to it. So, when we have added the second unit to it. Here in the project A it reaches to 45, then in project B it reaches to 30, in project uh, C it reaches to 30. So, as again we have added the third unit, in project A we are getting 35, project B is 20 and then project C is uh, again 20. Then again adding the fourth unit you can see here project A is giving us the 20 marginal productivity, in project B we have 10 and in project C we have 15. Now, as we are talking about the equi marginal productivity, you can see here in project A we are getting this equi marginal print, uh, you know productivity at the unit 2 or, or you can say the marginal productivity to uh, 20 right. So, how are we going to allocate these resources here? We are going to spend 40 million uh, sorry 4 millions on project A. 3 millions in project B and 3 millions in project C because we have this 10 millions with us and how we are going to divide this 10 millions in the different projects so that the marginal productivity which we are going to get at the end remains the same. So, this is how we are going to allocate our resources because this is the allocation of the expenditure which we had to make in the different projects this is how we have allocated. So, we are going to spend 4 millions in project A. 3 millions in project B and 3 millions in project C to get the equi marginal productivity. Again here we can have this formula to understand it more clearly. The marginal productivity of 1 should be equals to the marginal productivity of 2, P2 or P1 is the price we are allocating here whatever we have indicated. So, it should remain same and MU at the end will remain constant. Right. So, this is all about equi marginal principle. I hope all of you have under, understood this principle and this principle is applicable for both the producers as well as for the consumer. In the case of producers, we are going to talk about the marginal productivity we are going to get at the end whereas, in case of the consumer, we are going to see the marginal utility. Utility is basically the satisfactions we are deriving out of the consumption of different commodities. Since we want to have different commodities and how we are going to allocate our income in the consumption of different commodities so that at the end we would be able to get the same satisfaction with the consumption of different commodities, we use this equi marginal utility principle that we are going to further discuss in our uh, further lectures where we will be talking about cardinal and ordinal utility. Now, let us look at the topics which we have covered in this session. The very first topic if you talk about we have discussed about opportunity cost principle. This opportunity cost principle is very important for all the managers to understand and not only the managers, but for all the people to understand the concept of opportunity cost because this principle taught us what we are doing and what we could have done right. So, this is again very important for us to know 
what we are doing and what we could have done so that we could be able to find out the economic gain or economic loss and in economics not only the accounting profit matters for us uh, it matters that is the economic profit right if we are in the economic gain that means the alternative which we have chosen was the correct otherwise we are in economic loss because our actual earning should be more than the opportunity cost then only we would be in economic gain secondly we have talked about the incremental cost principle incremental cost principle help us to understand what extra cost is going to increase if we are making any change into our business activity right i have given you one example also to make you understand when you are supposed to calculate the things on the basis of full cost and when you are supposed to calculate it on the basis of incremental cost right incremental cost will be those cost which is going to increase because of that particular change you are making to your business sometime it is good for us to calculate them on the basis of incremental cost but that depends on the situation like the example which we have discussed and that we have seen that when we were having some idle capacity because we were already making some expenditure but if we are going to execute new order during that period of time when we were having some idle capacity then we should be calculating it on the basis of incremental cost what increased cost will be there right so this principle basically help you to understand incremental cost and incremental revenue what extra cost you are going to incur and what revenue extra, uh, you know increase revenue you are going to earn right so this you can understand with the concept of incremental cost and this is again very important because every time our situations are not same we are working at different situations so first we need to understand our situation and then we need to understand how we are going to calculate it rather we should calculate it on the basis of full cost or incremental cost then the next principle we have talked about is the time perspective principle time perspective principle help us to understand to make a right balance between the short run and the long run we need to make sure enough that whatever the decisions we are making into our business we have to take into account the impact of those decisions in the short run as well as in the long run because if we are only focusing on the short run then again it will be a problem for us we might be getting losses in the long run and if you are only focusing on the longer period then there is a problem how we will be managing our business in the short period so you need to make a right balance between the short run as well as long run so that you will not face any kind of a problem in your business then we have talked about this discounting principle discounting principle told us and uh, you know help us to understand the time value of money since we know that the value of money is decreasing day by day and the inflow and outflow of cash in business takes place at different intervals of time right so it becomes very important for us to know the value of money what will be the value of money after a period of time so this discounting principle help us to find out the present value of your money in terms of time period and lastly we have talked about this equi marginal principle like i discussed equi marginal principle will help you in the allocation of resources in a manner where you will be able to get the marginal productivity produced by different activity should remains at the end right so this will help us to uh, you know overcome the situation of under utilization and over utilization of the resources right so i hope uh this lecture is clear to every one of you let us look at the reference books uh, you know the subject taken from these of the reference books and thank you all of you